Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight on the news, details on a COVID outbreak at the Lancaster County Jail. Plus, the Applejack Festival kicks off today in Nebraska City. But first tonight, our own home. A hero laid to rest. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Fallen Marine Corporal Dagan Page's funeral was today. Yeah, Nebraskans and people from across the country showed their support and paid their last respects today. Channel 8's Joseph Nasser was there and joins us now with more in tonight's top story. Joseph. Good evening, Rod and Megan. Emotions were raw in Omaha on Friday. Emotions were raw in Omaha on Friday. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Sadness. Uh, lost brother. Um, and a community coming together. Friends and family of Corporal Dagan William Tyler Page gathered to grieve his loss and celebrate his life. Just outside of Omaha National Cemetery, a sea of people and American flags lined Highway 50 as law enforcement, first responders, construction workers, community members welcome Dagan to his proper resting place in his hometown. I am so glad to be able to be a part of it and show his family and his close friends that everybody cares. It's important I think to all of us to kind of represent our country you know in this way um, you know just to let them know that we're we got their back and, you know, we're here for them. Those who have served or have family who have served say it was their duty to support the friends and family of Corporal Page. I came from a Marine Corps family, so I, I'm obligated, I feel like, to be here and pay my respects the best way I can. Having a fellow brother pass away uh, at the end of combat is tragic. Dagan had our back as a service member to this country. It's only fitting that the city of Omaha had his by showing love and support to his friends and family. It's kind of heart pounding. I mean, you know, we feel for their families and stuff, you know, that that they've served for us and then they have to lose, you know, their children and, you know, our men and women at war. Corporal Page served his country well and with honor. It's our own hometown hero. So it, it hits really close to home. If you'd like to learn more about the life of Corporal Dagan Page, a Facebook page and a tribute, a tribute video have been made in his memory. We'll have links to that Facebook page and his website on klkntv.com. All right, thank you so much, Yosa, for that report. Now, when it comes to Afghanistan, the U.S. tonight admitting it made a big mistake. It centers around a drone strike in Kabul on August 29th. The target that was hit had no imminent threat. I am now convinced that as many as 10 civilians, including up to seven children, were tragically killed in that strike. Moreover, we now assess that it is unlikely that the vehicle and those who died were associated with ISIS-K or were a direct threat to U.S. forces. I offer my profound condolences to the family and friends of those who were killed. The Defense Department had previously defended the operation as a righteous strike. The misstep came days after that suicide attack at the Kabul airport. All right, let's get to your Friday night first forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron and for John and uh, some areas getting some showers. Uh, not actually at this hour. Now, it was looking like that yesterday, but the front moved through uh, early this morning and some dry air has moved in. That's been enough to uh, at least suppress the rain chances, but there is still some cloud cover as an upper level disturbance is rolling through, but we're starting to see some filtered sunshine through the area. Now, we do have northerly winds, so the cold front has passed. It could be a little bit breezy at times. Uh, generally speaking, winds in the ballpark of 10 to 20 miles per hour out of the north this evening, but the real telltale sign of being behind this front is the cooler temperatures. We are 15 degrees cooler than where we were this time 24 hours ago, the real cool spot is out towards the Tri-Cities. They were stuck in the upper 60s for most of the day, but with some sunshine starting to peak out, uh, folks out there have been able to get on up into the low 70s. Now, as of right now, we're able to uh, get up into the mid 70s in Lincoln. Uh, Beatrice actually got up to 80 degrees today, so generally speaking, the farther southeast you are, the later the front moved through this morning, uh, the warmer your temperatures got. Now, briefly, we are expecting a decrease in humidity, but that's going to come back for this weekend as we are expecting hot and humid conditions 
conditions, especially by Sunday this weekend. Now forecast for tonight, the cloud cover will eventually decrease heading towards 10 o'clock, mostly clear skies, perhaps some low level clouds moving in for the overnight hours. However, we do have a warm forecast for the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple minutes. All right, Malcolm, talk to you later. Two wildfires have broken out this morning or today in the uh, Nebraska Panhandle. Yeah, ch take a look at some of these photos here. People in Dawes County are evacuating because a fire just south of Crawford has grown to 600 acres. Crews are also battling a fire in the Scotts Bluff and Garing area. These incredible photos were shared on social media earlier today. A worker at the Nebraska Correctional Youth Facility was seriously injured. An inmate punched the staff member in a classroom. The inmate was restrained. There is no word on what caused the incident or what kind of condition the staff member is in right now. And 12 inmates at the Lancaster County Jail have tested positive for COVID just within the past 36 hours. All 12 live within the general jail population and involved all six housing units. The jail is now locked down and the positive inmates are isolated. Nebraska's unemployment rate for the last month was the nation's lowest. And it was the lowest on record for the state. Let's take a look at the numbers. For the month of August, it was 2.2%. In July, it was 2.3%. Quite a difference from a year ago. The unemployment rate in Nebraska then was 4%. Right now, nationally, it is 5.2%. All right, are you uh, looking to get away this weekend? Well, just on the road in Nebraska City, the Applejack Festival is beginning. You can pick apples, you can buy pre-picked apples, you can eat apples, of course. Uh, we have caramel apples, apple donuts, pie, cider, some of the best cider you're ever gonna have. Um, you can get it all here on the farm this weekend. And that's just part of the fun. While you're out exploring the orchard, you can do a little shopping at the Apple House Market, or maybe jump on a trampoline suspended among the trees, or just enjoy the scenery. And a lot of this fun is for free. You can come to the farm and experience Applejack without buying a ticket. We have parking on site um, and that is free and you can walk the trails at Arbor Lodge State Historical Park or across the property. So you can do all of that. Now there are some things that you'll need to pay for, like that trampoline I mentioned, or the bridges connecting the treetop village. And once you hit all the shops, those items as well will be on sale for you to enjoy. We are just one sleep away from Husker football taking the field in Norman against Oklahoma. It'll be the anniversary of the legendary game of the century. That's right. In his last press uh, meetup before the trip, head coach Scott Frost said his team is ready for the third ranked Sooners tomorrow. You know, we, we got a lot to gain and very little to lose in this game. So I just want our guys to play um, stress free, not worry about anything and just go attack. I think uh, attack is the key word. Yeah. We gotta, uh, we gotta run at things as fast as we can and try to go get after them. Uh, see where we land. It kicks off at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. You can watch it on Fox. Our sports anchor Kelsey Casper will be in Norman this weekend, so follow her and our social media pages for videos, interviews, and of course a full game recap. Coming up next here on Channel 8 News. A rally is planned outside the U.S. Capitol tomorrow, and authorities are prepared. We'll tell you more after the break.
Now to Washington, D.C., where federal, state, and local authorities say they're ready for whatever Saturday's planned rally brings. The rallies in support of the people charged in the January 6th riots and former President Trump sending conflicting messages. ABC's Ike Jachi has more. For the last eight months, the leadership of the U.S. Capitol Police Department has been preparing, working to ensure that we don't have a repeat of January 6th. Capitol Police telling the public they're ready for Saturday's planned rally in support for the jailed insurrectionists. We have contingency plans for any uh, possible disruptions. For Saturday, the department says an increased police presence will be in and around the city. A number of road closures will be put in place, plus the return of the security fence around the Capitol grounds. ABC's Rachel Scott showed us. That is a new surveillance camera that has been installed. The fencing now not just up around the entire Capitol complex, but also around the entire Supreme Court. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin approving a request by Capitol Police to have 100 National Guardsmen on standby who will only be called in as a last resort. A Department of Homeland Security official telling ABC News earlier this week that more than 700 people are expected to attend. Jared Holt, an expert in domestic extremism, saying on MSNBC that the online chatter ahead of the rally pales in comparison to what was seen the days leading up to January 6th. A lot of the same extremist groups that participated in January 6th have been very clear with their members that they should not go to this. Republican lawmakers not attending the weekend rally. However, former President Trump sending this message. Our hearts and minds are with the people being persecuted so unfairly relating to the January 6th protests. Trump trying to rewrite history on a day that saw police officers beaten and attacked and the Capitol stormed by an angry mob. So far, 610 individuals face federal charges for their involvement in the January 6th Capitol riot. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Now, your Storm Alert Team forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron. Well, some were fortunate enough to see rain early this morning. Here's a satellite and radar loop over the past several hours, uh, past 14 hours, and you can see rain off towards the Tri-Cities, and this was a pretty impressive line of thunderstorms. It wasn't uh, on a strong to severe side, but it was dropping plenty of rainfall out farther west, and then as it approached Lincoln, uh, it started to fall apart just uh, a little bit as we were well past the uh, daytime heating hours from the previous day. Uh, the cooler air helped these thunderstorms weaken, uh, but there was some rainfall over southeast Nebraska, none at this hour. However, there is an upper level disturbance moving through, not strong enough to initiate any showers. Now, while we won't rule out a stray shower for the rest of this evening, I'm hard pressed to think we'll see it because we're not seeing anything on radar right now, but the upper level disturbance is throwing some cloud cover overhead, still seeing some sunshine to fill in the gaps. Here's the rainfall for today. Officially at Lincoln Airport, we got three hundredths of an inch. Generally speaking, if you're on the northwest side of town, you got a little bit of rainfall, but for the central part of town and the southeastern part of town, uh, not much rainfall, if any, a measurable rainfall uh, fell in the uh, capital city out farther west. That's where we had a lot more winters for rainfall. We had eight tenths of an inch out towards Grain Island and even just north of Milligan uh, gauge corrected Doppler radar estimated uh, rainfall totals were uh, just at about an inch. So some folks did see a healthy dose of rainfall this morning. So here's a look over our Allo communications camera seeing some filtered sunshine. There are plenty of blue peaks in the sky and this trend will continue over the next couple of hours. We did have a cold front pass and temperatures are 15 degrees cooler than where we were this time. 24 hours ago. This is the telltale sign that a cold front has passed. Now high temperatures today got into the mid 70s as peaks of sunshine helped us get there. Now the Tri-Cities for the most part were stuck out in the upper 60s, but since uh, they've been able to see a little bit more sunshine in the late afternoon, was able to get their temperatures in the middle 70s this afternoon. So as we go in towards tomorrow, temperatures should start to warm up because the northerly winds we have today will shift back out of the south. That's going to allow temperatures to get into the middle 80s for high temperatures tomorrow. Uh, maybe some clouds here and there, but overall tomorrow is going to be mostly clear as you end towards Sunday, maybe seeing some more clouds, but overall mostly clear. We're talking about temperatures getting close to 90 degrees on Sunday and on our 10 day forecast, we're forecasting a high of 90 degrees on Sunday and it will be a humid 90 degrees as well. Off to our west late Sunday night, we're watching a, a complex of thunderstorms. I have a hard time thinking they're going to make it to eastern Nebraska. I probably have to wait till Monday before we have any uh, next rain chance. We'll talk more about that in just a minute or two. Humidity goes up as we go in towards the weekend. However, by two 
Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Uh, Wednesday is the official astronomical start of fall and it will feel like it. You'll see that in the 10 day outlook, but as you can see here, uh, the humidity really drops by the middle part of next week. Now, as far as the upper air pattern is concerned, we've got a hot dome sitting over us this weekend. That's what's going to make us warm. But then here's our next disturbance. It's starting to get closer on Sunday and it approaches early next week, so we're going to increase rain chances as a result of that. So your forecast for tonight, 65 degrees, some low clouds moving in, but overall mostly dry for tomorrow in the middle 80s. The humidity will be rising and clouds decreasing throughout the day. Here's a look at your 10 day forecast. Warmer on Sunday, 90 degrees could be breezy at times, mostly clear. Clouds will increase on Monday. Temperature is a little bit cooler as a result. We'll have some scattered storms in the forecast. Some of those may be able to linger into Tuesday morning, but we're drying out by the afternoon. Mostly clear conditions and check out the temperatures all in the 70s past Monday. Really starting to feel like fall. Yes, it is. All right. Thank you very much, Malcolm. A local steward farmer is paying over $50,000 a year in property taxes. And Nebraskans that are frustrated with high property taxes are seeking solutions. Merlin Nielsen has lived on this Seward County farm for over 20 years and has farmed and ranched on it full time since retiring as an animal science professor at UNL. His 2020 property tax bill for his Seward property and another smaller one in the Sand Hills is higher than many Nebraskans make in a year. About $51,000 a year. Nielsen is one of thousands of Nebraska ag producers that have the burden of funding their local school districts. Of that $51,000 Nielsen pays, over $36,000 goes to schools. Of that pot of money for education, less than $4,000 of it is paid for his home, with over $32,000 paid on his land and ag buildings. And everybody thinks, oh, we, in agriculture, you got to be making so much money you can pay for it. Not true. He's not alone. A report done by Creighton economist Ernie Goss in 2019 shows that from a seven-year time span, the percent of Nebraskans' incomes for payments on their home and business property taxes remain stable at around 3 to 4 percent. But tax payments on their ag land skyrocketed to more than 12 times what Nebraskans paid on their homes. It shocks you off your shoes when you look at the data. The reason they're so high is Nebraska needs the money to fund public schools. That same Goss report shows that on average, Midwestern states use property taxes to fund about 35% of public schools' total revenues. But in Nebraska, public school revenues are funded about 55% from property taxes. That's because the majority of public schools only get a small amount of money from the state to fund education, with the rest coming from county property taxes. That includes Douglas County West Community Schools. Really consistently get right around 10%, so we do get some state aid. Dr. Melissa Polancic is superintendent of DC West, which, as she mentioned, gets a small portion of their budget from state aid. This compares to Omaha Public Schools, which receives around half of their revenues from state aid. That's really how the system was developed, mm -hmm. is to not necessarily be equal, but be fair. While property taxpayers pay the majority of the D.C. West budget, the district has helped them out, cutting the property tax rate over the last two years. But we really feel like we have been very fair to our taxpayers. So while many school districts across the state are tightening their belts, Property taxes continue to go up. Nielsen, who is with activist group Fair Nebraska, has ideas. One would be for the large chunk of money that exclusively goes to schools to tax residential homes and apartments, but leave businesses and ag land with no property tax payments to schools. The only way I can see we can balance those when it comes to taxation for schools is to tax only uh, residential property. This will leave a gap of hundreds of millions of dollars so it would also include evaluating the state's sales tax rate. I believe the ability to uh, change our sales tax system is our largest opportunity for change. Nielsen wants to raise Nebraska sales tax, which currently sits at 5.5%, while adding sales tax to items and services currently exempt, like groceries, plumbing, haircuts, and car repair. While Plonsic so is leaving it to the experts on policy, she does believe the state should carry more of the load. Are we putting enough state resources to our local school districts? It would alleviate the taxpayer, so property taxes would decrease. Now these have been tried and have failed in the unicameral in the past, with Governor Pete Ricketts fighting what he believes to be tax hikes 
every step of the way. And so the legislature has only been able to make modest fixes, like adding to the property tax credit relief fund and throwing in some extra tax credits, which Nielsen calls a band-aid that doesn't fix the larger problem. It's a tyranny of the status quo. We just can't seem to budge off of what we did last year to do the same thing next year. Plonsic is fine with change, as long as she can give a quality education to her students. Anything that might rearrange our funding, but still uh, fund us at a consistent level, then we're going to be supportive of that. Until that happens, Nielsen will keep tending to his cattle, corn, and soybeans, and peacefully fighting for change in Lincoln. I'm just as optimistic as I can be. <laughs> Tonight, the Finally tonight, an old drawing newly attributed to Vincent Van Gogh will now be on display for the first time. It will be at the Van Gogh Museum in Am Amsterdam. The drawing is titled Study for Worn Out and dates back to November of 1882. It's part of a private Dutch collection and was only known to a handful of people. The owner of the artwork is remaining anonymous and a senior researcher confirms the unsigned drawing is real. Yeah, apparently the, uh, the anonymous owner asked the senior person there at the museum to look into it. You know, I'm not sure how they do that, but yeah, it says it's the real thing. So wow. there you go, piece of history now on display. Mm -hmm. How about that, Malcolm? I know, no kidding.
Well, let's get you a final check of weather real quick. We had a cold front move through this morning. Uh, we're looking at cooler temperatures, about 15 degrees cooler in Lincoln than where we were this time 24 hours ago. Uh, right now we're at 76 in Lincoln, so either way you slice it, cooler than yesterday. Uh, so middle 70s in the southeast part of the state, but reserving low 70s out towards Grand Island, Hastings, and Kearney. And it's uh, not as humid either. Humidity will return into tomorrow and going in towards the weekend, however. Now we do have a game of the week tonight. It is Milford versus Wahoo. Uh, temperature should be nice for that, generally speaking, starting out around 70 degrees, dropping into the 60s, clouds decreasing as we head throughout the evening. I don't think we're going to see any rain delays this evening. And Nebraska takes on Oklahoma in Norman, Oklahoma tomorrow. We got mostly clear conditions for that, and it's going to be a warm and humid one down in Oklahoma. Feeling like a nice Friday football night, though. All right, thank you, Malcolm. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good night. World News is next, and we'll see you back here at 6 o'clock. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Stop by Comfort Made Mattress Factory today and save up to $500 with our bigger bed, smaller price sales event. Locally owned Comfort Made Mattress Factory, 27th and Superior. Closed captioning on Channel 8 Eyewitness News is brought to you.